Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you guys how you can spawn custom props wherever your player is facing. I'm also going to show you how you can make them track your player at a custom speed, so I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, go into your props folder, basically anywhere you want to create your pets or your prop. You're going to right click, create a blueprint class, and then select building prop. So let me call this uh, pet2 or whatever. And in here you can add a static mesh component, so I guess static mesh. And then you can specify the static mesh here in the static mesh over here in the details panel. So just pick whatever and then blah 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 and then save, compile, whatever. And like that. But for this case I'm going to be using Debbie here. The next thing we want is a signal remote manager. So what you can do is go into your Fortnite folder, get a devices and you're going to search for signal remote manager and then go in fortnite again but in the, this one and then grab one of these um, whatever color you you grab i'm gonna grab eh, i don't know green because you should see the color here in the manager i'm in performance mode so that's why i can't see it uh rename this to spawn egg or something so spawn egg and go into advanced and configure this to i believe the green was is uncommon but rare is blue epic is Purple legendary is golden. So mine is going to be uncommon because it's green. Yeah. And then you can change the cooldown if you want. Next thing you want to do is create a new component or a new verse files. But I'm just going to make a new one. I'm going to call this device maybe. And we're going to create that. And we are going to go in here. So spawn pet. All right, guys, I'm in my spawn pet device. All right, so we're in the verse. The uh, first thing we want to do is first go up here and do using slash fortnite.com slash character. And down here we're gonna get an at editable reference to our uh, remote manager. This is just a signal underscore remote manager underscore device, and, and then we're also gonna need a prop asset. Now mine's is Debbie, so Debbie asset. So initialize this to create default creative asset and also make this at editable. That way we can change it later on. Let's do a spawn Debbie or spawn your pet or whatever. Okay, so we're gonna make our spawn Debbie function in here and we also get a bunch of players, so players. Here I'm just getting an array of players. I'm gonna set this to variable and that is because I'm gonna do in here in my on being set players, get play space. Okay, we have that all set up. So let's think about this for a second. Anytime we press the remote, we want to spawn our pet. So the way we know when a signal remote gets triggered is by calling the spawn egg dot primary signal event dot subscribe and anytime we primary signal the remote we're gonna, we're gonna spawn Debbie and yeah whatever cool now there's also a second one a secondary signal event the only the only difference between these two is that primary corresponds to your left click which is your fire button. So it would be, I believe, your right trigger on controller. And secondary, well, you probably guess that's your aim button, your default aim button. So either your left trigger or your right mouse button. But anyway, we're just going to be using the primary signal. But I guess I can leave that there to just to illustrate that. So in our spawn Debbie, the first thing we want is we want to get a fourth character. So we do if fourth character colon equals agent get fort character so if you can successfully get our fortnite character so i want my debbie to spawn in front of me so for that we need two variables firstly our actual player position so player pause colon equals our fort character dot dot get transform dot translation or so that's going to give us access to our player position but if we just we'll put this in our spawn method that's just going to spawn debbie on top of us so we're going to have her in front of us so to do that we get the player forward vector forward which is just the vector that points forwards uh where our player is aiming and we can get that by calling forward character dot get rotation dot get local forward now by default this get local forward vector is going to be normalized which means its length is equal to one this is useful because we can then scale it up by some value, which is the the units that Debbie's going to spawn in front of us. So, for example, if we want her to spawn three meters in front of us, we can just simply multiply this by 300.0. And the reason it's 300 and not three is because UEFN or Unreal Engine use centimeters as their default 
units of measurement. And then finally, I can just do Devi spawn pause colon equals my player position plus my player forward. So we add these two vectors together and that's gonna give us our Debi spawn position, which is gonna spawn in front of our player. Great, now we need to actually call our spawn prop method. So let me call spawn. And spawn prop takes in a creative prop asset. So we use pass in our Debi asset. This is why, by the way, this is a creative prop asset and not just a regular creative prop. The next thing we need is the location. So I'm gonna pass in the Debi spawn position. And then we need the rotation. Uh, in this case, I don't really care. So I'm just gonna pass in a rotation, an empty rotation, which is gonna spawn our Debbie. And let's see that in action. I go into UEFN, build first code, go into creative devices, whoops. And we do spawn pet, I believe. Okay, so drive out of your spawn pet device. And you're gonna see here two things. Firstly is your spawn egg, which is gonna be your remote manager. So go in here, pick your remote manager, and then your Debbie asset. So this one, very important. Remember how we made the blueprint back in the beginning? So in here, we can actually search for our Debbie. And as you can see, she's gonna pop up here, Debbie blueprint class. That's gonna set that to not the default prop, which I don't even know what it is. Build the first code again, and I'm gonna push changes or launch your session, either or. I'm gonna wait for this, because it's not gonna be real. So signal remote. So I have the green remote and if I spawn. Oh my God, we have Debbie here. There we go, so we can spawn a bunch of Debbies. But probably saying Debbie isn't doing anything at the moment. Why is that? Well, that's because we don't have a proper move to function for our Debbie, but we're gonna make that. So now we want Debbie to follow us around. All right, let's make Debbie move. So for that, we're gonna need a pet follow player method. So pet follows player. It's going to, it's going to take a Fortnite character of type Fort underscore character. This is the player that our pet is going to follow. So. So that's why you pass this in. And then we need a creative prop. So pass creative prop of type creative underscore prop. Then we add the suspend specifier. This just means it's going to be an asynchronous function, which means it can, it can run in the background. And we need this because we're gonna be calling the move to function, which needs to be within a suspend context. In this case, our method. So just call that void equals. And then here we can start coding the logic okay so in here first i think if debbie wants to find us we need access to our player position so actually before that i'm going to make a loop so call loop and then in here i'm going to sleep for 0, 0.0 seconds so our a game doesn't crash and then we need access to the player position so i'm going to call player pause and we just call the fortnite character dot get transfer or a translation similar to how we did it back up here. Now, theoretically, I could just call creative prop dot move to and just pass in our player position, oops, player position and empty rotation because I don't care about the rotation and then some time value. So let's say 1.0 seconds. Now, before we do anything, I want to sort of control Debbie's speed. And we can do this by simply using Debbie's current position and our player position. If you remember from phys your physics class, velocity is just a function of distance divided by time. So if we do some rearranging of some variables and letters here and there, we can get the time, which is equal to our distance divided by the velocity, which, which we can then pass here, which is going to dynamically sort of make Debbie move either faster or slower, depending on the distance from our player. Now to get the distance, first we need a the Debbie position. So I'm gonna do Debbie pause or just call creative prop pause or whatever. This is gonna be equal to the creative prop. So the prop that we pass in dot get transform. It's the same as the player. So translation, that's gonna give us our position. Next we can do the, 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 the distance from player colon equals. We can actually call it uh, verse has a built-in distance method, which is the which we can pass in two vectors. First is going to be the player position, and next is going to be the Debbie position. That's going to return the distance between these two vectors. And then finally, as I said, the, our time is just going to be the, our distance divided by our speed or our velocity. So we can do time colon equals distance from player divided by some velocity. So this is up to you. I'm going to say I don't know 100.0. 
And remember, this is in centimeters. So we have that and now we can get rid of this. And now we can pass in time. Okay, that concludes our pet follows player function, but we actually have to call this pet follows player method anytime our Debbie's spawn here. So as you've probably noticed, this is a creative prop asset. And I, if I try to call pet follows player and pass in a creative prop asset, it's gonna even error because these two things aren't the same. So how do we get access to the creative prop that we spawned? Well, that's easy. If we actually go into the verse digest, I'm, I'm gonna control click this, which is going to take me to the verse uh, digest. We can see here's our spawn prop function. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here, but what we really care about is this, the thing after the colon, that's the return type. So what this function returns, and we can see here it returns a tuple. Now a tuple is just a container, just like an array. In this case, we have a, oh, what is that? A creative prop. We also have a spawn result, but eh, I don't really care about that. So this is gonna return a tuple and similar to arrays, we can index the tuple. So if we do index zero, that's gonna give us our creative prop. Index one is gonna give me the spawn prop result. Like we said, we only care about the creative prop. All right, so back here, I'm just gonna create a variable called result colon equals spawn prop. Now, as I said, it's a tuple. So we need to get access to the first ele element uh, within that tub, which is our creative prop. So we do if spawned prop result of zero, and we're gonna get an error because if we go back here, you can see this is an optional, which means this can either be false or true. Your spawn prop can either fail or not fail. If it does, if it doesn't fail, it's gonna return a creative prop. But if it fails, it, this is going to be uh, false. So to actually test whether or not this is false and properly assign it, we just have to do question mark. That's it. And sorry. And yeah, okay. So instead of square brackets, this should be a zero because it's a tuple. So we get the zeroth element or the first element in, in the tuple, which is our creative prop. And if we can successfully spawn that prop, then we just call pet follows player. And we just pass in the fourth character because we, we already have access to it here. And we just pass in our newly spawn prop like this. Now you notice we get an error and that's because this is a suspense function and the spawn Debbie is not a suspense function, but we can just get around this by calling spawn. Just tell like that, boom, there you go. Now, before you guys go running off, um, going crazy and spawning a bunch of pets, uh, you can actually skip this sort of lecture. This is like uh, office hours or after hours or whatever. Basically, there's a glitch with the move to that sort of makes your the, the actual like thing that's moving to kind of teleport and look a little jarry. There's a workaround which I can make a separate video on, but here we're just using the just the standard move to function here, so that's going to work for now. I, I think this move to will suffice. But if you are still here in lecture, well, welcome to the post credit scene, and now we're gonna actually go into the test that out. So. Let us test that out. Okay, so last thing, just some minor adjustments. I'm just going to go in my thing, just set the spawn time to zero. And in here, I'm just gonna set the cooldown to zero. That way I can just basically spat my remote and just spawn into the Debbie's. And if I press, oh my God, we got Debbie. Spawn as many of these as I want. But yeah, you can see we have uh, attack of the Debbie's. And of course you can change the speed, which let me do that and show you what that might look like. All right, so we should be saying about this and I don't know the speed I'm going to make it 900 build versus code. Uh, pro tip, just push first changes. If all you do is change your code, it's going to be much, much, much faster. So oh, and spawn. Oh my God. Oh yeah. I can't even get away. <laughs> Run. <laughs> See, I can spawn a bunch of these as many as I can, I think. And you can <laughs> I hope this was helpful and yeah.